during Easter week, I was reading through the BIC Holy Week devotional guide and came to day seven, where Becky and Charlie Massinger had written the devotional on the darkness that fell over the earth. I've entitled my message today, When the Darkness Closes In, based on Mark 15, beginning in verse 33. Let's read together. At noon, darkness fell across the whole land until three o'clock. Then, at three o'clock, Jesus called out in a loud voice, Elioi, Elioi, Lima Sabachthani which means, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Then Jesus uttered another loud voice and breathed his last. And the curtain of the sanctuary of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. When the Roman officer who stood facing him saw how he had died, he exclaimed, this man truly was the Son of God. Have you ever felt the darkness close in? Three of the four gospel writers stated that at noon, darkness fell over the world until three o'clock. For three hours while Jesus hung on the cross, our world was engulfed in darkness. In the Mashinder's devotional, they wrote, and I quote, there were two kinds of darkness that afternoon. Darkness encompassing all of the physical world. The second kind of darkness was the darkness of hopelessness. Soul darkness. Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Is there any more penetrating blackness than that of feeling forsaken? Darkness forces us to search for light. Those words from the Mashenders really impacted me. And I began to meditate on this passage in Mark 15 and on Charlie's thoughts. I wondered what caused the darkness? Or maybe a better question is, who caused the darkness? And this thought startled me. I've always thought the darkness came from God possibly a combination of his sorrow as he watched his son die. Creation, groaning, as for the first time Jesus and his father were separated. Possibly it was God stating to the world, wake up people. You've killed my son. But as I meditated on this passage, the thought came, maybe I've been wrong. And the darkness came over the earth by the one that Paul calls the prince of the power of the air, Satan. Maybe Satan was making a statement that his kingdom of darkness had conquered God. Think of what it must have been like to have lived through the darkness. Have you ever felt the intensity of being thrust into total darkness? Sometimes I've been engulfed in darkness. Many will never understand the challenge of being a pastor in days like our world is facing. Countless folks have opinions on how the church 
should be handling this pandemic, and the opinions vary greatly. Plus, every pastor who has truly been called cares for his people, and he wants to help them through their trials. But how? How when you can't have one-on-one or group times? It's challenging enough for many churches to face this pandemic. Most forced to operate with shortfalls of income. But I want to give a shout out to our staff here at Sobel Christian Fellowship. First of all, our children's ministry puts out videos that are second to none. And Andy, Ken, and Kathy are working hard to see the church through these difficult days. It's challenging enough like I said, for the church to face this pandemic, but put on top of it that Sable Christian Fellowship has the added weights of being in the midst of a building project to complete. Loose ends still needing to be tied up. And then a lead pastor who has been greatly loved on medical leave. Pastor Dave and Lisa, you are loved and being prayed for. I want to tell you today, I've felt the darkness closing in, personally. When the challenges ahead seem greater than I feel able to carry, when I have no control over what is happening, and when I feel like I failed my Lord again, how could He ever use me? The darkness closes in. And we all have personal challenges too. I may not know all your challenges, but I know that Bonnie and I have felt the weight of not seeing our children or grandchildren for over a year and a half now. Our grandbabies are growing, and we miss them. Maybe you are watching from home today, and it makes you uncomfortable for a pastor to be vulnerable and talk about challenges that seem over the top. Maybe you'd rather hear a message on something warm and cuddly. And trust me, I've listened to enough in the last year. I don't really need to hear another one. After all, isn't this the first Sunday of the month, the Sunday Sable Christian Fellowship has designated as Faith Sunday for this year? Shouldn't you be hearing a message On that, listen to me carefully now. Until we can acknowledge our utter hopelessness that we can't face this on our own, until we fall on our knees in humility and cry out, to our God, knowing that unless He rushes in like a flood, we will drown on our own. We won't see the flicker of light up ahead. Maybe you are home watching online and you feel alone. The darkness closing in. You've been reaching out to God, and it seems 
He just isn't there. You're groping along, wondering where God is. Remember the darkness that fell while Jesus hung on the cross encompassed the whole world. Even Jesus' mother and his disciples were engulfed in the darkness. It wasn't like the flood that only impacted those who had rejected God. The whole world felt the weight of Jesus' death. But there is hope today. My hope is anchored in the promises of God's Word. I believe with all my being that I serve a God who is true to his word. That not one promise of God has ever gone unfulfilled. Hear the words of John 1.5. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. We may feel enveloped in darkness, but God's light will shine. Matthew 4.16 reminds us, The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And for those who lived in the land where death cast its shadow, a light has shined. What did Matthew mean when he penned these words, who lived in the land where death cast its shadow? I believe that Matthew was pointing to the darkness which fell when Jesus died. And it wasn't only the physical darkness that he was talking about, but he was talking about the darkness that everyone in the world must have felt, and especially those who had loved and followed Jesus. Easter may have been a month ago, but the hope found in the resurrection is always with us. In light of the resurrection, we daily experience the fresh start that we desperately need. A verse that I memorized as a teen comes to mind, Psalm 30. And verse 5, for his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. Joy will come in the morning. Sometimes I find myself thinking about when my time on earth comes to an end. And I walk through heaven's gates, the joy that awaits, the total peace of walking in God's light, in perfect communion with Him. Let the truth of 2 Corinthians 4.17 seep fully into your soul today. Paul announced, For our present troubles are small and won't last very long, yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them and will last forever. Paul was basically reminding us that the trials, the darkness that closes in us right now in our lives, 
right now in our world, it won't last forever. As Christians, we have the hope that we will walk with God in eternity. And looking back on these momentary trials will seem like chaff in the wind. If you're feeling alone today, the darkness overwhelming your soul, please reach out to the pastors here at Sobel. We care and want to help. But I want you to know that there are times in my life when crying out to someone else, it just doesn't seem to fit. It's like I'm not even sure what to say to them. And during those times, I'm reminded of what Peter said. Give all your worries and cares to God for He cares for you. Friends, God loves you, and He cares for you. Cry out to Him. Let's uh, uh, close our service today by crying out together in prayer. Oh, Father God, I acknowledge to you today that there are times in my life when I feel the darkness closing in, surrounding me, the weight of it, the total vastness of it. And yet, God, in the midst of those times, I have the calm assurance, the faith to know that you will never leave us or forsake us. I pray for those of our church that you would comfort their hearts. I pray for those who are watching today who may or may not know you. Help them to know that you are a God who loves us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whosoever should believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. In the powerful name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. I want to close with Ephesians 5.8. For once you were full of darkness, but now you have light from the Lord. So, Live as people of the light. God bless you.